Clay? There was a uh, report in the athletic calling you a wild card for the uh, Washington job that's now available. Can you say a few damage from that job? Well, Ben, you're trying to get me fired, so I'm just appreciative that you're on my side now. So okay. I've got, I'm, we're getting ready to play USC. I've not talked to anybody, so. Okay. What, what would you say is your level of happiness here at UCLA? This current time, Ben? Just in general. Just in general. I'm happy here. I like it here. Okay. What about this this current time? I love it here. Okay. Is it, did it match up with what you thought it was going to be when you took the job? Just the whole experience, everything that's happened? Does what match up? Just being here, the support you've gotten, the results, everything. Yeah. I mean, we're excited to be here. I love I mean, we talk to our players about this all the time. Conan O'Brien said it. If you love what you do and you love the people you're with and you're in heaven every day and that's what I feel like with these players and this coaching staff. We have an unbelievable group of young men that you're excited to get to work every day because of the type of guys you get to coach every day and it's a special group that you know I think it, it was on display last Saturday night when you guys watched play against Colorado. They get down a little bit but then they keep fighting. It's a resilient group that will give you everything they got so you know those are the situations as a coach that you want to be in. You want to be around guys like that so we can continue to attract players like that and this is a great spot. Speaking of the Colorado game, uh, what did you see on the film? Anything stand out to you? Any players in particular? Yeah, I think, you know, just the, the game of football is not a game of perfect, and we talk about that all the time. I think the game of football is a game of resiliency, and I think that's what our guys displayed. You know, we had a, we were actually moving the ball well in the first half offensively, but we had some penalties that, that we had a tug we had. We had a long run by Zach down to the one, I think it was, and that got called back because of the hold. Um, we had a touchdown by Cam Brown that got called back when we went for it on fourth down, and it's also a loss of down, so yeah. You know, so we couldn't convert on that drive, but we felt like um, our players were executing. We just there was the little things. You know, I think when you get to November in football, um, you got to be great with your attention to detail. Um, you got to be great with your pad level. I heard Mike Lombardi say that, a longtime general manager in the NFL, and you know he's really 100% right with that. Um, but I thought our pad level was really good. We ended up running the ball really effectively against them. You look at our our pad level, especially on that fourth and one. You know that they went for it. You know, in the middle of the of the uh, second half there. Um, you know, and I think our, our guys responded to the situation that we put ourselves in. You know, we don't blame anybody for anything that was going on in the first half. That's all us. You know, so where you are is you accept it. What did we do? How do we learn from it? We went into halftime. It was a really calm halftime. It was just, hey, this is our adjustments. If there are any, you know, maybe we got to feature this a little bit more, feature that a little bit more. But um, it's just about going out and executing. And I thought that's what our players did. So to you know, be down 27 and then come back and score 37 straight, you know, is a real credit to those players. It's a, it's a very resilient group. So. When you have players that you know making mistakes and they can come out here during the week with their position coaches and fix those mistakes, what happens with the place kicker who generally is out here working by himself and he's got problems in his game? Our place kicker doesn't work by himself. There's a snapper, there's a holder. Um, there's periods during the day where we do everything and we go through everything. And place kicker is no different than a free safety or a quarterback or a offensive Okay, I was just going off what we see because he's just always by himself at that point. So, and well, clearly there's, there's an issue. you got to know what drills we're in and if you're not here for the entire practice, when do we do field goal, when do we do that? Um, you know, there's a whole gamut to the whole thing. If you do individual drills, then you do group drills, then you do team drills, and there's a, there's a work up to it. There's a logical progression in terms of how we do things. So, you know, it's not like we go into a game and they... We haven't seen Nick for a week, and then we show up on Saturday and say, "Hey, Nick, you know we're going to kick. Is there anything we need to know about this?" I mean, that's just—it's kind of silly to, to think that that happens. So, there's nothing done in the game of football on an individual basis. Is there a concern that he's missed one in four games in a row, all of them to the left, and and yeah, even his PAT like missed to the left? There's certain things that you got to look at with everything, and we coach everything with him, and we talk to him about it. We talked about the snap. You know, is it the snap, is it the protection, is it the hold? There's a whole gamut that goes on in the field goals, but we have all the confidence in the world in Nick, and you'll see Nick kicking on Saturday. So. USC uh, has been playing, you know, two quarterbacks. Uh, how, do, how do you prepare for something like that, especially your scout team? How do you get them ready for... Uh... I mean, the, the offense doesn't change with both guys in, so, you know, really that's... When you're worried about two quarterbacks, all of a sudden there's one guy coming out and running, you know, zone read and option up and down the field, and then the next guy comes out there and empty, and they're running no-backs all the time. The offense is still run by Graham Harrell. It's still the USC offense, so um, both Slovis and Dart are talented kids. Um, you know, we faced Keaton before. I think he's outstanding. Um, we recruited Jackson. You know, we know what type of player he is. He was a very heralded player coming out of Utah. Um, he's played three games so far this year. Um, so, the, but when you look at when they're in, the offense doesn't really change from a schematic standpoint, whether it's Jackson or whether it's Keaton. How do, how do you kind of prepare for a team with an interim coach? Does that kind of make it challenging when you're looking through a film and trying to compile data and stuff like that? Or no? 
No, I mean, you just, it, it's what the coordinators are doing on each side of the ball. And, um, you know, the, Graham's still running the offense and, and Todd's still running the defense, so that part hasn't changed. So, um, you know, Clay not being there and Dante, you know, maybe does Dante handle fourth down different than Clay did or something like that. That's, you know, that's for us to prepare for. And you just look at how many fourth downs have gone for some of the decisions that a head coach makes, but they haven't changed anything schematically, um, offensively or defensively, since the, the coaching change was made. So. When did you think of Isabor's uh, performance? I think he had two sacks. And yeah, four Ottawa was, uh, um, you know, he's a relentless player. Uh, we love um, Ottawa's motor, you know, and how hard he plays. Um, Coach staff felt getting him inside a little bit, um, some mismatches on the guard was uh, something that we could exploit in the Colorado game, and, and uh, he jumped right to it. You know, he's, he's versatile because he can play both outside and inside for us, um, but he did a really nice job inside. The one thing I love about him was his motor. And he just doesn't stop, you know, and that's part of his mindset and, and everything that he does. So, you know, I was happy for his success, but it's it's earned. It's the same way he practices. It's the same way Ottawa plays. I, I know you can only play who's in front of you, but what does it say that all your wins are against teams with losing records and all your losses are against teams with winning records? It says exactly that, I guess. But I mean, we we just play them how they how they come. So, you know, and we can't control what the teams we play do after we play them or before we play them. So. That would fall into, for me, the way I look at it, that would just be a TBU, I guess. But you can control how you play against teams that are good. Yeah. But the record is the record, so there's nothing we can do about the teams we played in the past. So that statement you just made, there's not any actionable things we can do on it. We can't reschedule a game to try to play one of those teams that has a winning record, is what my point was. Okay. Well, how would you characterize the success of this team based on what's done so far? Our record's season. six and four, so that's right. where we are right now, and we're getting ready to play USC. So I don't stand here now looking back. I'm not writing a story, so that's that's for you to write that. So. Okay. Do you look at the process, where you guys are in the process, since it's a constantly yeah. evolving thing, and how happy yeah, are we, you with where you are do. in the process? I, I love our players, and I love our coaching staff, and I think these guys do everything that we've asked them to do. So, you know, again, we, we prepare during the week, we compete on Saturdays, and then we learn from that experience and then we get back at it again on Monday with whoever the next opponent is and whatever the new schemes we got to face and whatever the new challenges that that new team that you're playing from, uh, whether it's personnel challenges, whether it's schematic challenges, things like that, that's kind of how we, we go through the whole thing. So. There was a dramatic improvement in the second half from the penalties in the first half. Um, how, how concerned were you with the seven penalties in the first half? I wasn't concerned. You didn't think there were discipline issues or anything like that? I wasn't that? concerned with discipline issues at all. Not at all. Have you started communicating with guys who have remaining eligibility with that super senior extra year about? Who yeah, we've talked to everybody. We're in an ongoing conversation with all of our guys. So, you know, we, we talked to all the guys that have the ability at the beginning of the year, and then we'll revisit it after the season with those guys. But much like our coaching staff and our players, is our focus and concentration is on who we're playing on a weekly basis. So there's how's, time to handle all of those things. How is that going to impact recruiting as far as the numbers? It impacts everything. So we're all, I mean, and every coach has, is dealing with it now. It's just a a new thing that you have to deal with just because um, the numbers change. You know, and usually you know who's leaving and who's, you know, you may have one or two kids that apply for the draft early, but that's it. But there's a there's a lot in the state of flux, but, but we plan for that, so. But you guys have to start reducing the roster numbers starting next year, don't you? Because you got up to 115 this year with the COVID extra year. No, is that's it, just the, the NCAA mandating that next year you start, you start going back down? No, that's just the number of players that go to camp. Oh, okay. So that's not the scholarship number. So okay. the scholarship number is at 85. And all of those super seniors are, are gone. So the Ethan Fernando, Paul Gratton, that class, they don't have the ability to come back. Okay. So you were just grandfathered those guys. They've got the extra year of eligibility. Then it's just managing your 85 as you move forward. Um, you know, and really what you do is what you, what, what you leave, what you lose, you can add. The difference in the rule this year, it's, it's usually you can only, there was an individual limit of 25. Mm -hmm. So when we first got here, we were down scholarships, but we could only get 25. I think when we played SC four years ago, we had 57. You know, we could only get up to 71. We couldn't get to 85. So we're at 85 for the first time this year. So whatever leaves in this class, we'll be able to replace from uh, that number. And that number's a little bit in flux because there are some kids that have an option. Um, we have some juniors that have some options too. You know, they have to make some decisions on what they're going to do. So um, our job in that whole situation is we just give them all the information that's available to us. To educate them, and then we have really smart kids here, and they'll make educated decisions on what's the best situation for them. And, um, we support them in whatever they do. That's it. All right, thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks.